Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, General Hawk, first of all, you're getting a lot of practice at this because you're responsible not just in this committee but also within Intel in the dual-hatted role that you play. Uh, I want to thank you for your service to our country as well as your family. You've heard that from a number of folks up here, and we really do recognize that there's a challenge for the family because you do move regularly, and uh, we understand that, that it, it, it's not something that a lot of folks across our country uh, probably understand as a part of the mission that you have. So thank you for that sacrifice for you and the family. Uh, I have uh, followed up in each of our hearings this year um, and, and asked each of the individuals coming before us in command positions the following. And it has to do with, um, I, I believe that we have a very serious issue with regard to spectrum. And uh, specifically with regard to the proposed sale by some members uh, of, of Congress suggesting that we should uh, sell portions of the spectrum in the area of 3.1 to 3.45 gigahertz. Uh, and this is an area in which we have significant defensive capabilities and that we utilize today. Based on your knowledge of this issue, if there is a report which is due out in September, if that report demonstrates that auctioning off this 3.1 to 3.45 gigahertz portion of the spectrum will adversely impact our national security, what would be your advice uh, to the President and Congress? As Senator, I, I am following the, the ongoing study. If that comes back as high risk, I would recommend not to share. Thank you. There seems to be someone somehow has continued to push this narrative that this portion of the spectrum should be sold for commercial purposes. In your professional military opinion, do you believe it's possible that our adversaries may very well be attempting to influence this debate and uh, push the sale of this spectrum that is vital to our national security? Senator, in, in, in my current role, I haven't seen uh, indications that that's occurring. Um, I would expect that 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 is a drumbeat in standards bodies and things along that line uh, from in terms of trying to influence uh, areas that would disadvantage the United States and advantage China. And in this particular case, that would disadvantage this country. Yes, Senator. Thank you. Uh, let me move on to another area. That, this committee was successful in including a provision within the Senate's version of the NDAA, which would authorize the Department of Defense to conduct cyber operations against transnational criminal organizations, including the cartels. How would you use these increased authorities to enhance the whole of government approach to combating transnational criminal organizations? Uh, Senator, if, 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 we, if there were uh, authorities to sign to U.S. Cyber Command, uh, both in the law and by the department, our, our first stop is, is always uh, the supported commander. Uh, and in this case, you know, we would have uh, conversations with the U.S. Northern Command commander about, about priorities and, and where we would fit uh, into an overall strategy that would really be interagency approach uh, and, and support to what U.S. Northern Command needs. Clearly, you could bring capabilities to the fight. Senator. Thank you. We are also undergoing the largest overhaul of our nuclear triad in decades, and we're doing so against the specter of two nuclear near-peer rivals. All elements of our nuclear deterrent, including our command and control systems, are being modernized. The cybersecurity of our NC3 systems must be a top priority. In the current and projected threat environment, what do you see as the biggest challenges for nuclear command and control from a cyber perspective? And I ask that recognizing that we're in an unclassified environment. Uh, Senator, I think from our perspective, this, this is our partnership with Strategic Command is focused on ensuring the, the resiliency and health of, of our NC3 enterprise. And so from a Cyber Command perspective, both today and, and if confirmed, we've got a strong relationship with STRATCOM. We just held a collaborative conference that brought in the services, brought in all of our partners to work uh, to ensure that we were providing the best threat intelligence and also thinking our way through the architecture as they advance to ensure they're doing it in a way that we would recommend from a cybersecurity perspective 
the role that Congress has done to give the U.S. Strategic Command the responsibility for the overall NC3 enterprise has also allowed us to really focus on the priorities that, that come from General Cotton, and we're closely aligned with him, and we'll continue to do so if confirmed. Thank you, and, and, and General, I, I do look forward to supporting your nomination. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Mr. Chairman. On behalf of the Chairman, Senator Fisher.